The gospel lesson from Matthew this morning is beautiful, is it not? Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It sounds like such sweet, simple words. Welcome. After thank you, they are the next ones that we learn. We teach them to our children to say. We learn them in other languages. Gracias. De nada. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. These are indeed powerful words. Words that change lives. Words that change hearts. You have heard them. You have said them. Think back to the times and places where you have heard. You are welcome. Maybe it wasn't even a place that said it, but showed it. You are welcome. Come, there is a place for you. Think to times when you have uttered these words to others. You are welcome. Come. There is a place for you. And you have made room, made a place for someone. Today, Jesus tells us when we do that, we do that for him. When we welcome others, we welcome Christ. Now, I'll be honest, I know everyone's prayer life is a bit different, and I want you to know that I do talk to and with God. And I don't really know how to say this, but I, do, but I don't always talk to him like a person. I don't say, hello, welcome, good to see you, Jesus. But this passage tells me I do when I say those words to someone else. Now, it would be interesting, very interesting, if we tried a little experimenting. If we stopped using each other's names. Oh, boy, she's, she's lost it now. She's lost it now. Don't worry. This is, this is a hypothetical. Hypothetical. Well, maybe. But what if, instead of the name of the person you are talking with, you substituted Jesus? Oh, man. Think about that. So add Jesus to the end of your sentences, to the end of your emails. And see if they ring true to what you want to say and communicate. I wonder if this would help us to to see, to truly see Christ in our neighbor. So let's flesh out some possibilities, just for fun. Let's think of some good ones first. Hey, Jesus, let me get that door for you. You've got your hands full, Jesus. Let me carry that for you. Jesus, how was your day today? I want to hear about it. I'm sorry you are grieving, Jesus. Let me make you supper. How about a casserole? Because you know Jesus loved casserole. Well, now maybe how about some... Not so good examples. Jesus, I can't talk to you right now. I'm busy. I'll call you back next week, sometime, later, later. Jesus, you stupid cow, put your foot on the gas pedal. 
I don't want to have to eat with Jesus. I really hope he's not coming to that party. So maybe we should just stick using people's real names. (laughs) And avoid any potential heresies. Your neighbor is not Jesus, but you are to treat him that way. What if you thought about what you said to another person you also say to Christ? What you do to another person, you also do to Christ. Okay, so back to the text, the gospel text for this morning. We hear that there is no action of love too small. There is no action of love too small. Even little, too tiny. Small efforts of kindness matter. Practice the small stuff to help shape and discipline your character for the big stuff. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to the little ones, just giving A drink of cool water can change a life, a heart, a mind. So who's then to say what is small stuff? It is not a small thing to be kind. Especially when we pay attention to the text, a cup of cold water. Did you catch that? Remember, this is before the refrigerator had a built-in ice maker. This is before the refrigerator. So think about that. A cup of cold water. Kids, just to keep you up to date with your history of inventions, the ice maker, 1845, patented 1851. Dr. John Gorey, also credited with air conditioning, so we should all be thankful for that. This is way before that. A cup of cold water meant an extra walk to a spring. And so I wonder if the example of a cup of cold water, even though it seems small, is still a reminder of making an effort, of sacrificing, of going the extra mile. You want water? Let me put some ice in it. You need a coat? Here, take my cloak as well. You have to walk one mile? Let me walk with you the second. Whatever we do that welcomes others, welcomes Christ. And whatever we do that welcomes Christ, welcomes the one who sent Christ. One last thought before we close this morning, but I want us to think about that we often put ourselves in the story as the ones bringing in the cup, the glass of cold water. But I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that you have received. Of course, in matters of hospitality, sometimes it's hardest to be a guest, to receive. But I think it's important to remember that we ourselves, too, first were in need before we can truly give. That we are called to remember that we first here were fed before we can feed others with our very lives. In order to be truly generous, we have to remember what it was when someone gave to us. True hospitality means knowing what it is like to be a guest. 
Friends, all of us, we're not just the ones with the cups of cold water to bring, but we are also the thirsty. We also need, crave, thirst, and desire God's goodness. I think it's only when we remember that we are the prodigal son can we ever learn to love and live like the welcoming father. And we can walk with others. Because the one who walked an extra mile for us is Jesus. The one who gave you his coat, his cloak, his shirt off of his back, his skin off of his back, is Jesus. Jesus has given us everything. So we are free to give ourselves away. Thanks be to God. Amen.